important thing, obviously, is the groove. Yeah. Uh, and then good time. If you're starting out, you, you need to put an awful lot of practice time in with a metronome. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things you don't practice with a metronome, but, but you have to put an, an awful lot of time in with it, uh, practicing different tempos, mm -hmm. uh, actually a lot of different dynamics. Uh, it's, you know, it's practice like really, and practice extremes. I mean, try to be more, way more prepared than you'll ever need to be. One exercise that I do, I set a click and I'll play in time and then I'll deliberately go outside the time. I'll just play totally nuts for, say, a couple of beats or yeah. a bar or whatever. And the, the challenge is always to come back in dead on the beat, yeah. to always know where the time is. And the, I'll, I'll do that, and I'll get to the point where I'll play maybe four or five bars, just totally loose, free, and just crazy stuff. Yeah. But always knowing where the time is. Chester, when you're in the studio working with a producer, your hi-hat technique can change the whole flavor of a song. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, if it's more of a rock kind of attitude, then I play tighter eighth notes, and even the things on the snare and bass are just simpler and straighter, like this kind of thing. Uh, but maybe if that's not quite making it, or maybe they decide they want to go with a, a looser, more you know, funk kind of thing, I'll maybe change the hi-hat, maybe double it. But also I'll play, I guess what I, would, I think of as a little more sort of ghost notes with the snare and bass, this kind of thing. Uh, and then I can kind of make, you can make it sort of halfway in between, just change the hi-hat, not really double it, but instead of making it tight like, but more like a. I personally prefer a lot of drums. Mm -hmm. I mean, to me, it's like leaving some of your notes at home. If you're playing keyboards or something, you take the whole keyboard. You don't like yeah. take the middle octave. I don't normally use as large a kit in the studio as I do live. Mm -hmm. Live, I mean, I go for it. I got like two bass drums and nine toms, the whole bit. You know? Yeah. Uh, but in the studio, I, I keep it down to four, maybe five toms. Mm -hmm. um, and even at that, a lot of engineers look at me like I'm crazy when I walk in because you know, a lot of guys are just going with two toms and that's it. You know? If you're going to build a track in the studio from scratch, mm -hmm. would you say that your beginning point is with the drums? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. then everybody will play to you. The bass player mm -hmm. will settle in with you and the mm -hmm. other guys will kind of build, kind of like building a house, so to speak. Well, that's one way it's done. I mean, I've, there are there are the times when you finally get to do a, a totally live session sometimes where everybody establishes the groove together and that's always fun mm -hmm. but basically the credit or the blame does seem to go back to the drummer as far yeah. as the, the basic groove. If you had to give a few words of encouragement, some advice maybe to mm -hmm. a few beginners out there, people who love the instrument as well but don't really know what to focus in on, what advice could you give them? Learn as much about music, listen to as much music as you possibly can, uh, I would say learn piano along the way, study piano um, try to play as many different kinds of music as you can. Play with, try to play with more experienced players as often as possible and love it. Mm -hmm.